today we're going to be talking about how to find the area between curves when the curves are defined as x equals something in terms of y. And in this particular problem we have the two curves x equals 2y squared and x equals 4 plus y squared. Now when you first see a problem like this you might be tempted to solve both of these equations for y in terms of x, but oftentimes it's a lot easier to leave them this way and find the area between curves when you have uh, curves defined as x in terms of something with y. The good news is that the process is really pretty similar to what we would do when we have curves defined as y equals something in terms of x. So the first thing we're going to do is set the curves equal to one another. So since they're both equal to x, we can set them equal to each other and then solve for y. So we'll say that 2y squared is equal to 4 plus y squared and now we want to go ahead and solve for y. So let's go ahead and subtract y squared from both sides and we'll get y squared equals 4. We'll take the square root of both sides and we'll find that y is equal to positive or negative 2. So we have two intersection points, y equals negative 2 and y equals positive 2. If we graph these equations here, what we would find is that we'd see something that looks like this roughly. We have two curves, one that looks roughly like this, and the other one that looks something like this, a more shallow parabola. And we have two intersection points. This is the intersection point here, y equals positive 2. And then we have an intersection point here at y equals negative 2. So normally, when, we're, when we have an area between curves problem and our curves are you know, normal looking parabolas that open upwards, we are integrating, our, our limits of integration are x-coordinates. In this case, they're, they're y values. So we're going to be integrating from negative 2, y equals negative 2, to y equals positive 2. And when we do this, within our integral, we want to subtract the left curve here from the right curve. So our integral that we set up is from negative 2 to positive 2. So negative 2 to positive 2, the lower limit of integration here, and the upper limit of integration here at the intersection points. And then we take the rightmost curve, this one here, and we subtract from that the leftmost curve, this one here. We need to figure out which one is which because we don't know yet. And the way that we'll do that is just by taking any point between negative 2 and positive 2 and plugging it into both equations. So we could take, for example, 0 or negative 1 or positive 1. Let's go ahead and take positive 1 because it'll be easy. If we plug positive 1 into both equations, we would get x equals 2 times 1 squared, which is just x equals 2 for this first equation here. For the other one, when we plug in 1, we'll get x equals 4 plus 1 squared, and therefore x equals 5. That's what we get when we plug 1 into this second equation here. So what this tells us is that at this point right here, y equals 1, for this first curve, we get a value of x equals 2. So right here, if this were x equals 2, and for the second one, we get a value of x equals 5. So if this value here were x equals 5, what that tells us is that this second curve here is the rightmost curve. It's the green line here. It's the one that's farther out to the right. So that is going to be the first curve that we put inside our integral, 4 plus y squared. And then because we got a lesser value, we got x equals 2 when we plugged 1 into this first curve here, we'll subtract that curve. So minus 2y squared minus that equation there. And then we're going to be integrating with respect to dy. So we have values of y here or, or a y variable. We have dy here and we have limits of integration that are y values. y equals negative 2 and y equals positive 2. So now we just need to go ahead and simplify this integral, integrate, and then plug in our, our limits of integration. So we'll get the integral from negative 2 to positive 2. We'll get 4 minus y squared because we have y squared minus 2y squared dy. Now we can just use power rule to go ahead and take the integral. So we'll get 4y 
minus one third y cubed, and we're gonna be integrating that on the range negative two to two, those are our limits of integration. Remember that when you have a definite integral like this and you're plugging in limits of integration, you always wanna plug in the top number first and then subtract whatever you get when you plug in the bottom number. So we'll plug in positive two here first and we'll get four times two minus one third times two cubed. Then we'll subtract what we get when we plug in our lower limit of integration. So we'll get four times negative two minus one third times negative two cubed. And now we just need to simplify. So four times two gives us eight minus two cubed is eight times one third is eight thirds. So we get minus eight thirds minus four times negative two is negative eight. Negative two cubed is a negative eight times a negative one third is a positive eight thirds. So plus eight thirds. We'll get eight minus eight thirds minus a negative eight is plus eight. Minus an eight thirds is minus eight thirds. Now if we wanna go ahead and find a common denominator here of three, a lowest common denominator of three, we'll multiply this eight by three over three, and we'll get 24 thirds minus eight thirds, again, plus 24 thirds minus eight thirds, and so we have 24 plus 24 is 48, minus 16 is 32, so we'll get a final answer of 32 thirds. And this 32 thirds here is this area here the area between the y values, negative two and positive two. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.